A few weeks ago, we looked at gel electrophoresis, an incredibly versatile technique used for at least a dozen different types of analysis of different biological molecules and their interactions. As a quick reminder, the technique works using a special block of gel and electricity to pull molecules through it. You put your sample in pre-made holes in the top of the gel and a special mixture of control molecules in a hole next to it. Then turn on the power and let them run. The control mixture will spread out as lighter molecules in the mix move faster through the gel and form a series of bands made of molecules of known size. You can compare any bands that your sample produces with these control bands to gauge the size of your sample molecule. Of course, this is a simplification and you can do a lot more with gels. As part of that video, we looked at how you can make the special tank you run gels in for only a few dollars worth of parts. The tank works well, but there was an issue I noted which is actually seeing the bands once you've run a gel. In theory, you can just kill the lights in the room, throw on some UV blocking glasses, and shine a blue or UV light on the gel and see the bands. But in the case of DNA electrophoresis, the amount of DNA in each band is minuscule, and even though the DNA is stained with a dye that glows under UV light, the amount of fluorescence can often be below what humans can easily see. Luckily, there's a device that solves these problems called a gel dock. Basically, it's a special box that replaces our shoddy vision with some nice, calibrated silicon, i.e. a camera. Normally, gel docks are crazy expensive, easily eight dollars to $12,000 if not more. And yes, it'll come with a lot of bells and whistles like a screen and automatic controls, but in essence, all it is is a box with a hole in the top for a camera, a trans illuminator, which is just a bunch of blue or UV lights, and a filter on the camera to block that blue or UV light out. So of course I built one, and I'm honestly really impressed with the results. I got the basic blueprint from an article in the Lab Times about building a DIY gel dock, and I've linked that in the description. In the paper, they're pretty clear that you don't need to stick to their exact design and lots of variations will work. So in this video, I want to go over what I ended up making and the parts I used. Then we'll look at some tests and other fun things that this device can do. Let's start with the camera. I'll be using my Nikon D3200 as the camera because it can take long exposures and gives me lots of control over the settings so I can take the best picture possible. You can probably get away with a cheaper camera, but your results may vary. Personally, I really would recommend a DSLR for this, as my best results came from a 20 second exposure which simple point and shoot cameras can't usually do. I figured out the minimum focal distance of my lens and then designed the box around that. I made all the pieces out of some thin MDF as I wanted all the walls to be opaque but still lightweight. You can use other materials, this is just what I had around. I cut everything on a table saw to make sure all my edges were nice as the goal is to make this light proof so we want to avoid any gaps. For the hole in the top, I just drilled a small pilot hole and used a scroll saw to cut out the rest. I've designed this to fit so that the lens fits most of the way into the box but will rest on the edge of this hole. I chose a spot on the lens where it flares out that's well past the focus and zoom controls so they won't get bumped if the camera gets moved. My box is 15 centimeters wide and 25 centimeters tall but design yours around your camera and lens. I used some epoxy to glue the box together and once it was cured it was time for a paint job. The outside just got some blue spray paint but the inside got a coat of black 2.0, the darkest paint currently available to consumers. In theory, any matte black paint should work, but I had this stuff so I figured I might as well use it. With everything painted, I added a small ring of felt to the top hole so that I don't scratch up my camera and so the lens has a nice soft place to rest on, while also filling any gaps so the light doesn't get in. With that done, it's onto the transilluminator. For mine, I picked up some cheap blue and UV LEDs. Mine are flathead because I'm using these in another project you'll see soon, but I don't think it really matters. I also picked up a $1 Tupperware container. I marked out 16 holes for the LEDs on the Tupperware and then carefully drilled them out. I also used a file to make sure that the holes were trimmed so the LEDs could sit flat and shoot directly towards the center without tipping upwards. I decided to pattern the LEDs while making sure to have two of each kind on each of the four sides to give good light coverage. All the LEDs were glued into place and then it was time to wire them up. I wired all the blue together in parallel and separately all the UV together in parallel. I forgot to film it but I also added a 200 ohm resistor to each set so they don't get fried. Once everything was wired up, I could add some power to check and see if everything is working right. The nearly blinding light shows that it is. I added a switch and wall power supply, and then after tidying up the wires, everything was mounted in the box. I got it wired up so that the three positions on the switch are all UV, UV in blue, and all blue. To turn it off, I just unplug it. With the box built, let's finish this up by talking about filters. As you can see, the blue light is blinding, so we need a filter to remove it so we can see any fluorescence on the gel. The filter I went with is a Tiffin 21 orange 52mm filter. The source paper says that the Tiffin 16 also works. I went with the Tiffin 21 because it had one day shipping on Amazon at the time. Now, it can be tempting to avoid going for these as they're a bit pricey at 50 bucks each. You're probably thinking, well, why can't I use some orange plastic or stage lighting gels? The answer is because they probably won't work. 
I tried a bunch of different lighting gels and several different pieces of orange plastic to no avail. I wasn't really expecting them to work, but I figured for the few dollars worth of materials I could test it out and tell you that they don't work. So don't try and buy them as a cheap hack. Stick to the Tiffin filters. I'm sure there are other good quality filters that will work, but these ones are known to work. In either case, attach the filter to the front of your camera and you're ready to take some images of gels. In the first test, I hadn't painted the Transilluminator yet, so there was a lot of glowing contamination from the table we set up on. I've since changed that and it isn't an issue anymore. The gel we're looking at was testing some DNA extractions I did recently to see if they'd worked. This is how the gel looked when I first took the picture. I then took the image and played with the settings in Photoshop, cropped it, and adjusted things until it was able to mimic the look of a professional gel doc. I made sure not to edit any details, just adjust the settings like curves and exposure and hue. I found the most useful setting to be the black and white control. By the time I was done, the bands were super visible. So much better than trying to eyeball this. Unfortunately, you can see all the contam really clearly, and one of the bands that's easier to see on a professional gel dock is obscured here. A quick coat of paint solved this completely. With the newly painted Transilluminator, I wanted to really dial in the settings, so I ran a new gel with decreasing concentrations of ladder, that control mixture I mentioned earlier. From left to right, I started with 5 microliters of ladder, and decreased 1 microliter in each successive well, and did 0.5 microliter in the 6th well. I didn't show it, but after I ran the gel, I sat for almost an hour playing with my camera settings to get the best shot of the bands. For this first control gel, you can see all the way down to the 1 microliter lane, and if you're generous, can slightly see the 0.5 microliter lane. So I ran another control gel, but this time with a different gel stain and more of it. I think the results speak for themselves. While this is a really ugly gel because I'm still working on adjusting the voltage and gel concentration for this gel box, you can see everything super clearly. Even the 0.5 microliter lane is bright enough to see easily. I bet I could have the amount of ladder again and it would still show up. So far, the best settings for all of this I've found are 15 microliters worth of gel green stain per 100 milliliters of gel, an ISO of 800, an exposure of 10 seconds at f5.6. I think I'd decrease the gel stain by a microliter and this would be perfect. Now a bit of math. On the far left, there's about 50 nanograms of DNA in each of those individual bands. So in the 1 microliter lane, which is the fifth lane, there should only be 10 nanograms of DNA per band. And in the faint 0.5 microliter lane, there should only be 5 nanograms of DNA per band. That means that so long as I use this gel as my control, keep all my camera settings and Lightroom and Photoshop settings the same, I can roughly quantify DNA based on how bright a band appears. All the way down to 5 nanograms, which is a tiny amount of DNA and actually within the noise figure of a nanodrop spectrophotometer. I even think it could go down to 2 nanograms with that extra gel stain. One final fun test is to look at something other than gels. Since we've made a perfect lightproof box, this setup is ideal for looking at things like bioluminescence. I happen to have some bioluminescent E. coli, so I thought I'd give it a shot. I removed the filter from the camera since the bacteria glow blue and we wouldn't want to block that out. I set the ISO to about 3200 and took a 1 minute exposure. Sure enough, you can clearly see the blue glow of the bacteria. Their brightness changes over time though, so a fresh plate will glow brighter than an old plate and this particular plate was a week or two old. Honestly, I'm surprised it was still glowing. In a couple of weeks, we'll come back to this bacteria and talk about how their bioluminescence works and look at some cool things that can be done with them. And I'm waiting on some bioluminescent fungus to arrive, and when it does, I'm going to take a really fun time lapse of it growing in this setup. But other than that, there's not much more to gel docs. They're a simple piece of kit that if you've got a lot of the parts already, like a decent camera, they are absolutely worth building. For me, this was a fun little one-day build, and I think it will get a lot of love in the near future. Before I wrap up, I just want to talk about something people are calling Nerd Thunder. It was an initiative for some cross-promotion that Jerry Ellsworth started, and I thought it would be a great chance to give a shout-out to some other great science and engineering channels. First off, Jerry herself. Her channel is amazing, and she's done lots of great projects that I'm excited to try myself someday, like making her own OLEDs, EL wire, transistors, and so much more. On the bio side of things, there's David Ishii. He does some amazing biology work, and we'll be talking about his bioreactor when we get to the bioluminescence video. And finally, a channel that's really been growing a lot lately and that has some amazing content, Tech Ingredients. They've got a similar style to mine insofar as they cover a really interesting and broad assortment of topics, including lasers, jet engines, and making moonshine. I've put links to all of those channels in the description, be sure to check them all out. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, then be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to see when I post new videos. These videos are made possible by the amazing support of my patrons and channel members, so if you'd like to help keep the flow of videos rolling, then consider supporting. And of course, be sure to check out my other social media accounts for even more regular content. That's all for now, and I'll see you next time.